We are happy to welcome Coach Dave Wanstead back to the show. All right, Dave, the league has changed the rules on tackling. They're getting rid of the hip drop tackle. I hate it. I don't know how you feel about it, but I like football. Do you like football? Can we have a hip drop tackle? It's a violent game. What's, what's your reaction to the newest rule addition? Oh, you, we have to – the first point is, obviously, any changes that they make with the rules – it's got to be uh, usually safety is involved with it, Mark, and you know that. And that's what happened with this hip tackle. I had a tough time teaching it. I was up top. My grandson's up at Loyola, and uh, you know, and, and I have a tough time teaching the new technique. And the whole gist of it is, they were trying to do something where the defensive guys would not have their head involved in putting the head across the body and hitting them like we all did for a hundred years. So they were putting the head on the backside of the running back. And the only way to pull these big, strong backs down or receivers is to pull them down and roll, actually pull them on top of your body. Well, when you do that, obviously their ankles, their knees, they get caught underneath you. There was one, they averaged 22 to 25 injuries this week, the league said, uh, during the course of the year. And that's one a week that somebody was getting hurt with this technique. So they did change it. So my the interest I have right now, what's going to happen going forward? Because if, if you can't hip roll, number one, you're going to have to get them on the ground somehow. Are we going to start putting our head across and uh, to give ourselves a little bit more body surface, I should say, to get them on the ground? So the defensive guys are going to have to make an adjustment. Here's the other thing. It's got to be called by the official. Uh, you know, the horse caller is pretty obvious when they put that in that's usually out in the open the receiver backs running down the sideline and you see the guy grab him. everybody in the stand sees it these calls here sometimes are in in close quarters in the interior of the line and those officials are going to have to make a real split second decision whether they throw the flag or not so i the rule is fine I'll be real curious to see how many times it's called. And that Right, and that flag could come out at key points in the game, and then we're going back and forth, and then the whole discussion moves away from the game and to the officials, which we don't want. Dave, how do you teach a guy to play defense right now? Because you don't want them out there thinking, then they're going to get hurt because it, the, you know it's NFL football players. It's moving fast out there. So you got to get them playing instinctively. I don't know how you would, if you were stepping in there, get guys comfortable with what they're allowed to do. Well, here's, here's what happens, Mark, and I can tell you this. These guys are out there trying to put food on their table. They're trying to make a living for themselves, for their families, for their kids, and they're going to try to get you on the ground any way they can. I mean, so we can tweak this role all we want, but at the end of the day, the defensive guy's job, they know if they don't make that tackle because they're trying to not put the head in front or they're trying not to roll, and the guy breaks it and goes 60 yards, he's going to be cut, and they're going to get somebody else. So they're putting the burden all on the defensive player uh, to, to try to help from a safety standpoint, but it's going to make it difficult. It, it truly will. All right, let's move to a rule that I actually like. They're changing the rules on the kickoffs. You're getting rid of the opportunity for a surprise onside kick, but how often is it a surprise, really? And now you're going to have actual returns unless, you know, 60 mile an hour collisions. I, I like what they're doing on kickoffs here, Dave. Yeah, the, the whole thing. First of all, on the uh, onside kick, you know, you got to be behind and you've got to alert the officials, which in turn alert the other team that you're going to try one only in the fourth quarter. So uh, there won't be any more secrets or surprise onside kicks, as we all call them. Uh, so that's done. Okay. Now, when we talk about the kickoff, what's happened? You know, the last 12 kickoffs of last season, okay, through the playoffs in the Super Bowl, the last 12 kick times the team kicked off, there were zero returns. 11 of them were kicked through the end zone, and one was down, caught in the end zone, and the guy took a knee. So what was happening was the, the fans, there was no excitement. It, it became kind of a dead play. Uh, so the owners were getting, the, the special teams coaches were getting nervous. There was real talk about how much do we need these special teams coaches? Why don't we just alert, alert, you know, eliminate punt return, eliminate kickoff? And so they came up with this concept, which they copycat a little bit from the USFL, which now they're going to put the players within five yards. Okay, I mean, the, the kickoff's going to be at the same line, the 35. Nothing changes there. 
But what's going to happen is the coverage guys, all 10 of them, are going to move to the 40-yard line across the 50. And the return guys, nine or 10 of them, are going to be at the 35-yard line. So they're going to be within five yards of each other. No double teams, no blocks in the back, no trap blocks, very little contact. But here's the key. You to take advantage of this. You have to kick the ball, what they call it, in the landing zone from the 20 yard line to the end zone. If you kick it out of the end zone or you kick it out of bounds, you're, you're going to take the ball in a real disadvantaged position. So now they're, they went from 20% kickoff returns in the National Football League last year, where the USFL last year using this same concept, the kicks were returned 85% of the time. So that's what the NFL wants. They want more action. They want more excitement. And the special teams coaches are all for it because it's kind of saving their jobs and it's giving, keeping them alive as far as opportunities to coach. Exactly. The returners are way more important now. Cue you up, Bayless Jones. Maybe have a chance to stick now or somebody else. I mean, look, uh, that spot's yep. a lot bigger. I I'm excited about it. The ball's going to be in play more. All right, let let's move on to Ryan Poles. He had some comments on Caleb Williams. He was on the Pat McAfee show earlier today. Uh, let, let's take a quick listen to polls. You know, you want to know, does he have humility? You know, can he self-assess and say, you know, I'll take ownership of, of what he needs to continue to work on and improve? Um, and he's checked all of those boxes so far. So I've been encouraged, you know, with the time that we've spent with him, the things that we've learned um, in terms of does he fit our culture and can he be a guy that helps take the Chicago Bears to the next level. Positive, 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 and more positive. Yeah. I mean, really, this, this is things like it sounds like everything that we heard about Caleb Coach as being kind of this guy that might be hard to deal with. None of that is actually being proven to be true as the Bears do their due diligence here. Absolutely. And we, and we have to believe in, you know, Ryan Poles, is, his job is going to be on the line with this pick. We all know that. He knows that. And I think we got to trust Ryan. Uh, he's done a fabulous job so far of, of uh, critiquing players, not just the talent, but the character. And you've heard me say this. I said it last week. The talent sets the floor. The character sets the ceiling. And Ryan knows this. That and when I say character, I mean, you know, the work ethic thing. The, the stuff that, that Ryan Poles was talking about there. You know, what, what is the culture of this team? You know, that's the character that, that we want here at the Bears. And that's what they're they are establishing right now, and and we got to trust Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus that they know, you know, they're around this kid more than anybody else. They're doing their homework, and uh, that's great news. Let's take it that way. That is because we know he's got the talent. Now, will the intangible things continue to go forward to to, to be a Super Bowl type quarterback, a Super Bowl type team? And uh, we got to keep believing that they will because uh, Ryan's doing his homework and he he knows what he's doing. The talent sets the floor. The character sets the ceiling. That's like Wamba, Wani mentality. I like it. Uh, all right, let's go on to another one here. Poles was asked to respond to RG3's opinion that Caleb shouldn't go to Chicago. Bears GM, yeah, uh, not surprisingly, not happy about those comments at all. It, it pisses me off a little bit, to be honest with you, because we were hired to break a cycle. Um, the same thing when I was in Kansas City. Uh, Coach Reed, all of us were brought there to break a cycle, and we did. And no one talks about those days anymore. It's all about what they are right now. So I really believe we're about to break this cycle and get this, this city in, in a really good situation and, and win a, a lot of games. Um, so the past is the past. Like, I don't worry about that at all. It's about where we're going. Chiefs will never have a quarterback until they get Patrick Mahomes. Cubs will never win a World Series. White Sox will never win a World Series. I, I, I like where Ryan's at on this, right? It's different now. Now, they, of course, they got to win. They've only gotten to seven wins, but they are trending in the right direction here, Coach. Yeah, and, you know, RG3, I mean, he's paid to give his opinion. Ryan Poles is, is paid for the facts, and, and, I'm, and Ryan Poles knows the facts about this kid. He knows the facts about the situation, where this team's going. And, uh, you know, RG3, you know, God bless him. I mean, he's, he just knows what other players are telling him and what he's experienced, maybe or heard or read from the past, not what's happening right now. So um, I, I liked how Ryan uh, uh, Poles responded. I really do. Yeah, a little, little backbone right there. All right, let's wrap up with this. Bears-Texans Hall of Fame game. 
Give me some advantages or disadvantages for this coach because, you know, the, now you're going to start earlier. You're the first preseason game. Training camp starts earlier. Is that a good thing or do you look at it the other way? Well, I've coached in this game and it's long when we had the four preseason games plus this. You had five, you, you know, it, it was a long period of time, okay, before you were playing a regular season game. The players were getting antsy. I mean, everybody was kind of. Uh, ready to go, and you were concerned that the guys would get a little bit bored mentally. Uh, now, you know, I think it's a good thing. It really gives you a chance to evaluate these rookies. Uh, we went up there, when we went to it, we worked against the opposing team uh, for a couple of days and, and then played the game. So, you know, you get a chance to take advantage of that. And, and you know what, from the player standpoint, I don't know how many of these guys have been to Canton, to Ohio for the game, and the uh, everything that goes along with it. It's a nice couple day trip. Obviously all the history and everything that goes along with it. You know, it's national TV exposure. A lot of these young kids that probably won't make the team with the bears get an opportunity. So there's a lot of pluses to it. There, there truly are. And uh, with a new quarterback that the bears are going to have, I mean, you know, hopefully he gets enough playing time and the more exposure that he can get to this offense and NFL speed and situations, the better off he's going to be. That'll be the storyline. Are they going to let Caleb play? Is he going to be in there for a series? We'll see. We'll, we'll, right. we'll, we'll wait a second before we get there. Dave, great to be with you. All right, Mark. Good talk to you. Congrats. You finished the video. If you want to build on that success, download the NBC Sports Chicago app. It's got highlights, exclusive insights, and push alerts tailored to you. Everything you need to be a real Chicago sports fan. Download it now.